Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Today I am joined by Randy Conley. How are you doing, Randy? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Excellent. And Randy is Vice President of Client Services and Trust Practice Leader for the Ken Blanchard Companies. I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with, with Ken Blanchard's work. And today, as Randy is the Practice Leader of uh, the, the Trust Practice Leader, we're going to talk about leadership and trust. And th- th- so let's just kind of baseline this um um, Randy, um, you know, some people would think that when you're in a leadership position, you should automatically get, you know, you should automatically be trusted by virtue of your title, your position or whatever. Right. You know, what, why is this? Why is this not the case? Well, you're right, John. People often assume that trust just happens in relationships, either by virtue of your title or position mm-hmm. or just in the amount of time, you know, someone that trust should organically grow by itself. And the reality is that trust is built on perceptions Mm -hmm. and those perceptions are formed by the behaviors that we use. And so leaders have to use specific behaviors that engender trust with the people that they lead. And trust is something that needs to be earned. You know, trust has to be given from one party to another. And so I think it's a little naive for leaders to think just by virtue of their position that they automatically have trust from people. Um, so, so do you think that most people understand what trust actually is? So, I mean, fundamentally, what what is trust? Trust is a complex topic that has many, many dimensions to it. And I don't think people have a good grasp of exactly what trust is. And all the research around trust says that it's made up of four distinctive elements. So you engender trust with someone when you are able in what you do, you are competent, you Mm -hmm. have the ability for your given role. Uh, The second element of trust we call believable. And that means you act with integrity. You're a believable person. You tell the truth. You're honest. The third component of trust is being connected in relationships. You demonstrate care and concern for other people. And then the fourth element that um, is in our view of trust is dependable. You maintain reliability with people. You follow through on your commitments. So we call that the ABCDs of trust, being Mm -hmm. able, believable, connected, and dependable. And as the leader, or really Mm -hmm. in any relationship, if you model your behaviors after the ABCDs of trust, you will build trust in that relationship. So so are you saying then that um, if you go through those ABCs, right, so you need to be able and you need to be, you know, competent. So what happens if you are put into a leadership position and maybe you lack the skills for that position? Can you, I mean, can you overcome that or does that immediately, you know, undermine your position? Right. Right. You can overcome it. Obviously, you can always develop skills and competencies in your given role. And especially in today's environment where leaders have such a wide span of control, the leader is not always the technical expert in a given job. Mm -hmm. Right. But the leader should know how to facilitate work getting done in the organization. They should be skilled at equipping their people with the tools and resources they need or helping them make decisions or solve problems. So, um, you know, leaders don't always have to be the expert Mm -hmm. genius in their given technical area, but they need to know how to bring those resources to bear to help their team succeed. And then uh, how much does um, authenticity play a role? Because that seems to be a big buzzword right now. Everybody's talking about being authentic, um, which in some ways I find that it's it's strange that people, you know, that when people are discussing, how how can I be more authentic? (laughs) Yeah, It's kind of funny. But how much does authenticity play into all of this? It plays a huge component. In our ABCDs of trust, authenticity would really fall in both the believable Mm -hmm. and the connected element. 
So authentic people are those who are sincere, they're genuine, they tell the truth, they have uh, a set of values, and they walk the talk, right? They behave in alignment with those values, and they care about other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you've probably heard that old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And so, you know, you can be the most expert genius in your given industry or role, but if you don't really care about people, if you're not authentic and sincere, if you don't show empathy, people won't trust you to the extent that they need to. So it's a huge component. So um, talking of, of connectedness and, and connecting, right? I mean, this is this is something that fascinates me nowadays is because, you know, we we talk all the time about we, you know, we're in this connected world. We're so connected. And I, and I think it's kind of disconnected connectedness because it's superficial mm-hmm. connectedness in many yeah. ways. So, uh, I mean, how do you how do leaders really um, show a, a level of, of real connectedness as opposed to superficial connectedness? Because I'm not even sure that people even understand so much the difference anymore. Right, right. I agree with you, John. It's it, isn't it ironic? We live in a world now that it is so easy to be connected technology wise and yet study after study shows that there's epidemics of loneliness Mm -hmm. and depression and, you know, um, mental illness and and different challenges that result from isolation and and people not being connected. And I don't think there's any silver bullet answer. You know, I think it gets down to the fundamentals of human relationship. You have to actually care about someone else and you have to spend time with that person. And so for leaders, I think it's as simple as doing things like we're doing. If we work together, carve out a few minutes to get on the webcam, even Mm. if we're working remotely, get on the webcam, build that relationship. You know, leaders need to care about their people as people and not just workers doing a job. So when you have your regular one-on-ones or check-in meetings, take some time to ask about uh, their personal life, you know, how was your weekend? What, what are your kids up to these days? You know, um, get reconnected on a human level beyond this. And, and talking a little bit then about the, the, you know, the dependability or the dependable, you know, part of this. So, you know, you, so you can be, you know, you can be confident, you can be believable, you can be well connected. Um, but how quickly does that erode if you're if you're not that dependable? Yeah, I think it's one of the top three ways that leaders break trust is they just simply don't follow through on their commitments. We want to follow through and do what we say we're going to do, but we don't always have a plan for doing that or we're not as organized as we should be to follow through on our commitments. So you know, a way to increase your dependability is to be very thoughtful about the commitments you're making. Mm. Don't overcommit. If you do commit, make sure you have a plan in place to deliver. And if you can't deliver, communicate early and often, you know, let people know how things are going. I've found in my experience, tell me about yours. If you let people know well ahead of time of a deadline that you're running into challenges or you need more time or more resources, People are usually willing to work with you and figure out alternative solutions, you know, rather than come the day of the deadline, you just don't deliver, right? Uh, yeah, I would agree 100%. I think nobody likes surprises. And I mean, nobody likes bad news and nobody likes to be told that you're going to miss a deadline. But certainly, if you're told two months before as opposed to two hours before, it's it's a lot different because you have an opportunity to do something. But I think that's a I think that's a key point uh, that you brought up at the beginning is be careful of the commitments you make, because there is a tendency, I think, you know, to overcommit, you know, as leaders, because you because people want to, you know, they want their team to feel good and be motivated and everything. And so making commitments to people, um, you know, you can get carried away with that. Right. So I think that's the important yeah. thing. It's better to to be very careful about the commitments you make. 
Right. I mean, that's what leaders do, right? We we try to accomplish things. We get mm-hmm. things done. Um, we make things happen. We want to serve people and provide them what they need. And so we're often very willing to raise our hand and make a commitment for something. And then, you know, we, we get back to our desk after the meeting and we look at our to-do list and there's 57 items and we're like, oh, how am I going to deliver on this one, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we just got to be really judicious about what we commit to. And I think that's a, 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 that also leads into a, another point is um, being able to say no, right? Uh, I mean, that's a key part of, of leadership as well. And that's something that some, pe- some people struggle with, particularly, I mean, if they're newly in a, in a leadership position, they think it's all about being a yes and I can do it. But the ability right. to say no I mean, how much does that play in ultimately to to trusting leadership? Yeah, it's a very important point. Um, one of the things that really influences people's trust in leaders is met expectations. Mm-hmm. And conversely, um, unrealized expectations uh, cause an erosion of trust. So... I think it's important for leaders to just be clear on expectations. You know, don't set those false expectations or unrealistic expectations um, that put you at too much risk of eroding trust. I've found uh, that people are much more understanding if you give them the honest truth up front about a given situation and, you know, give the parameters set the realistic expectations, and then meet those. You know, don't try to sugarcoat things. Don't try to, you know, um, talk bigger than what you can actually fulfill because you think that that's what people want to hear. Mm-hmm. It's be set realistic expectations and then meet those expectations. That builds trust with people over time. They know that you're a person of your word. Yeah. And so and so the lesson it's a lesson for some, you know, leaders when you're new in your position is like be careful, set good expectations, set good goals, meet them, rather than don't try and like boil the ocean all at once. Exactly. Exactly. Uh so let me ask you, so trust in itself, right? So we're we're living in a world now where you know people don't feel like they can believe you know, what's on the news from whichever political end of the political right. spectrum you come on uh, or you you exist on. Uh, people aren't are worried about, you know, what's happening to my data. Can I even trust, you know, the, the social media sites I'm on? So there's a lot of angst around trust. So do you think trust is becoming a, a far greater um, issue for people today? And does that have I mean, does that have real competitive advantage at the end of the day? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think trust is a huge competitive advantage from whatever angle you look at it, whether it's from the employer-employee relationship. If the employee can trust the employer, there's tremendous benefits to increase productivity, increase revenue, uh, increase um, in efficiency and innovation. If you look at it from a brand perspective, a company to consumers, if the consumers trust that organization, that their information is safeguarded, if you know they behave in a socially conscious manner, if uh, their actions are consistent with their espoused values, huge competitive advantage over organizations who don't. And we live in a low trust world. Many, many studies, you just, you you see it in the headlines all the time of, you know, the statements of X percentage trust the government to do what is right, or X percentage trust CEOs to do what is right. And those numbers are at, you know, all time lows. They really, general societal trust has been falling since the 1970s. And I think technology, our interconnected world, is throwing so many more dynamics in there that make it uh, unsettling for folks to know who they can trust, when they can trust, how much they can trust. And so the clearer that leaders and organizations can be on, here's who I am, here's what we do, this is what we believe, 
really back to the authenticity component that you you were talking about, the better they are. People want something they can believe in and that they can trust. So the more you can establish that with your stakeholders, the better off you are. Yeah, and I, I think that's a fascinating. It's a fascinating point that uh, you know trust, not just a competitive differentiator, but there's a there's a hunger for trust because there's such a low trust and there's, there's a huge trust deficit nowadays out there that people are really looking for to work for people they can trust. They're looking mm-hmm. to have relationships with brands or vendors who they can trust. And I think the important thing, as you say, is for people to realize is that once upon a time, you may have started off at a neutral level where Mm -hmm. there was, you know, they didn't trust you, did not trust you. Today, I think you're always starting off at a deficit of people naturally don't trust. That's a great point. Yeah. Over the years, it has gone from that assumption of trust down to sort of a neutral level of not trusting or distrusting to now we are in general a distrusting uh, society you know we we're always looking for what's that hidden agenda or you know what's what's the person or the company trying to really get out of this relationship you know so if you so if you can really follow if you I mean on a company level you know you said about commitments for leaders but I mean it's at a company level to your customers if you can really follow through not just not just deliver on what you said you would deliver but do it in a way that shows that you care about the people that you have great follow through that whatever interactions they have after they and purchase from you that's that can build because because again because our expectations are so low if you do those things well people are suddenly go wow this is a phenomenal company to work with even if you're just doing the things that you should be doing anyway exactly you're exactly right uh just say what you're going to do and do what you said right It, it really gets down to those basic building blocks of fundamental leadership um and those A, B, C, Ds of trust that I mentioned, mm-hmm. able, believable, connected, dependable, that applies both on an individual level as well as an organizational level. So if you look at organizations who demonstrate their competence, they act with integrity, they care about people, and they do what they say they're going to do, those are the most successful, well-run organizations. So yeah. it, it's, it's not rocket science. It's really fundamental blocking and tackling, you know, doing the basics and doing them well. Yeah. I mean, and yet again, it's a uh, it's simple concept, but uh, simple, unfortunately, doesn't equate to easy. And, exactly. Uh, common sense leadership is not always common practice. Exactly. Well, you know what they say about common sense. It's not that common. Yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, exactly. Randy, this has been great. Uh, before we go, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and a little bit more about how they can find out more about you and also about what the Ken Blanchard companies do? Yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, I'm the trust practice leader, as well as the vice president of client services at the Ken Blanchard companies. Uh, You may be familiar with Ken Blanchard, the business author who's written a number of best-selling books, probably most famous for the One Minute Manager back in the the 80s, but he's written, geez, over 65 books, and uh, we're a leadership training firm. So we work with top organizations around the world to help them uh, build better managers and better leaders and better organizations. You can find me on the web at leadingwithtrust.com. I have a blog where I post weekly articles about trust and leadership and uh, the Ken Blanchard companies. You can find us at kenblanchard.com on the web or um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Randy Conley. You can find me there or Twitter at Randy Conley. Um, We'd be happy to connect with you and engage, engage with you and help you on your leadership journey. Yeah, listen, Randy, this is this has been great, and I would you know highly recommend people check out your your blog because I I do think that leading with trust with trust because I do think trust is going to continue to grow uh, as a as something where you can differentiate yourself because whenever there's a deficit, if you start to address that, you're naturally going to put yourself in a winning position. So again, yeah. Randy, thanks for talking to us today. My name That's is John nice. Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. 
see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.